Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Now I honestly wasn't very excited for this movie whatsoever, but as the movie came closer and the people around me, my friends at work, started talking about Dungeons and Dragons and how they are big fans of the game. They play it all the time. They started bringing the 20-sided dice to work and we just started you know, having fun with it. And even though I still haven't played an actual game of Dungeons and Dragons, I learned how to appreciate what the game actually is. And more importantly, I get to see what the game means to people who are big fans of it. And then I saw that one trailer that had the zombie scene in it, and that scene is so good. It's one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie, and it, it kind of sold me on the film. And then, of course, the movie premiered at South by Southwest Film Festival, and it got really enthusiastic reviews from critics. So I was like, okay, maybe this movie has something to it, and then I finally got to see it last night. And let me tell you guys, it is worth all the hype, and it is easily the biggest surprise of this year. I don't see any other movie this year being as surprisingly good as this one is. So I'm going to be talking about spoilers for this movie, so if you have not seen Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, I highly recommend it, especially to people who are fans of fantasy and feel like we haven't had a really fun and exciting fantasy movie or show in quite a while because honestly we haven't and this has got me excited about fantasy movies and shows again so let's just jump right into the movie. So what is this movie about? Well essentially it follows Chris Pine who plays Edgin in this movie as he goes on this quest to rescue his daughter from the clutches of Hugh Grant's character Forge. Edgin and Holga played by Michelle Rodriguez in this movie are essentially trying to talk their way out of their prison sentence to this council who are the ones who are going to decide if they're going to be set on bail or not and they're trying to stall for time essentially waiting for this guy named Jonathan to show up to the council and so we get to see Chris Pine's backstory at the beginning of this movie in a very fun and entertaining way. Edgin is a harper in this world which means he has a vow to protect the realm against red wizards. His greed however gets in the way leading to the death of his wife leaving him alone with his daughter Kira. This leads him to do the heist which essentially gets him caught later down the line in order to try to get his hands on the tablet of reawakening which could possibly revive his wife from the dead which essentially means he abandons his daughter for his wife which leads to his entire character arc throughout this entire movie. But before I get into Edgin's entire story arc in this film let's talk about the supporting cast because I think this movie has a great cast in general so let's start off with Holga who is played by Michelle Rodriguez and she's always great in all the roles that she's in but she's kind of typecast as the badass strong female character in all of these sort of franchises and movies that she's in like Fast and Furious and like Avatar. And that's essentially what she is in this film she is definitely good at playing that type of role but I think the difference here is she gets to have so much more fun in this movie with this character and the comedy therein because of course you have the great scene with Bradley Cooper who makes a really funny cameo in this movie who of course is I'm gonna mention a lot of Gardens of Galaxy references and kind of similarities in this movie of course he is Rocket Raccoon so he is in this movie in a little cameo appearance as a little tiny guy in this movie but you get a lot of comedy with this character and she's essentially the heart of this movie as well because after the death of Kira's mother she needed kind of a replacement to that and that is what Holga represented to her she's kind of the surrogate mother and so when the things play out the way they do in this movie she ends up being the heart by the end of the film that has the most emotion that kind of ties everything together by the end. Justice Smith plays Simon in this movie who is the sorcerer that goes on the journey and the heist with the characters in this film and he essentially has a lot of self-esteem problems which also brings a lot of great comedy with this character as well and I think when it comes to Justice Smith I think there are certain roles that really really work for him and some that really do not work for him like for instance Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom he was not written too well in that movie and is resorted as kind of an annoying side character but in something like Detective Pikachu he was really charming in that film and especially here I think this is my favorite performance of his he is just so funny in this movie the self-esteem sort of thing that he's doing throughout this entire movie and the voice that he's chosen for this character is really funny that sort of deadpan and dry I guess line deliveries that he has in this movie just really does work and he also goes on a pretty meaningful journey himself throughout this entire movie of discovering that he is the only one in his way this self-esteem problem that he has is in his mind it is a mental problem that he has to essentially get over with in this movie and his dynamic between him and Sophia Lillis in this movie who plays Doric is also really enjoyable. And speaking of Doric in this movie, she's actually the next character I want to talk about. And even though she doesn't get as much of a meaningful character arc as some of the other characters in this film get, she is still very interesting because of her power set. She is a druid, which means she can shapeshift into any sort of animal. And essentially how this movie plays out is each character gets essentially a scene that can kind of 
show off what they bring to the table in terms of this group that they're going to be pulling off this heist with. So at the beginning of the movie, we get to see Chris Pine, you know, talk his mouth off. He's showing that he is the fast talker. He's showing that he can come up with plans that even though they might fail, he can recover really fast and come up with a backup plan just in case. And pretty much right after that, you get to see what Holger brings to the table, which is pretty much just being a badass barbarian warrior in this movie. And then right after that, they go find Justice Smith's character and you get to see him doing this magic show. And even though he's kind of a bumbling idiot and he hasn't truly mastered the sorcery in this film, you you can see the promise in this character and when it comes to the the stressful situations he ends up getting out of the the situations that he's in by the skin of his own teeth and so when you finally meet Doric, you get a great sequence where she infiltrates the castle and she gets to see exactly where the vault is, how they're going to plan their heist. And you get this amazing action sequence where she's shape-shifting into all these different creatures while the Red Wizard and all these other guards chase her out of the castle as she's transforming from creature to different creature to different creature. And it is so entertaining. This is also one of my favorite sequences in the entire movie. And so it really does showcase each character and what their abilities are and what they're essentially going to use to be able to get out of any situation in the last act of this movie. And the way that they all are introduced and the way they all showcase what they can do is a very smart way to just kind of guide you through this movie in a, in a pacing that really works for the first half of this movie. And this is where we get to see that scene that I mentioned earlier as my favorite scene in the movie and that is the zombie sequence and this entire thing is just so incredibly funny. Yes, that scene that you get to see in the trailer is definitely in this movie and it's definitely very funny but immediately after that they have to go to all these different soldiers and try to ask them five questions to try to figure out where this helmet is that they need in order to get into the vault and essentially all these these different soldiers they died before they got to see where this helmet went and so he has to go and ask all these different sort of you know corpses what is going on and you get to see exactly how they died and you essentially get to flesh out this entire battle sequence through the eyes of a bunch of soldiers who die in a very brutal or very silly ways. This of course leads us to our next character that is introduced in this movie and that is Zank. He is a paladin in this movie and he kind of represents the NPC and like I said I don't play Dungeons and Dragons so I didn't really catch on to this until after the movie and some of my D&D friends kind of said that this character and his mannerisms and the way that he talks and the way that he walks away in a straight line is very much an NPC and I can very clearly see that now. He is very funny in this movie and he's kind of like the Drax sort of character in this film where he doesn't really get metaphors so things kind of go over his head and the comedy and the banter between him and, and Edgin in this movie is very funny. And throughout all of this you're being introduced to a very fun fantasy world you're seeing all this magic be used by all the different characters in this movie and it's just it's just so entertaining to see them all do their thing especially Chris Pine's character and how he is the fast talker he's trying to come up with all these plans and the way he describes it he's like he'll come up with a plan it'll fail he'll come up with another plan immediately after that and so uh, the other characters in the movie are like okay so you just come up with bad plans that always fail and the great part about this character and about the writing in this movie is how he'll come up with these ideas and when they all go wrong because of course they're all going to go wrong it adds more and more conflict to the movie and it all feels spontaneous it all feels natural the, the decisions that he makes in this movie doesn't feel scripted which I think is very hard to kind of writes in a script because of course you can have the actors improvise in terms of the dialogue in this movie with some of the jokes in this movie but what is so much more impressive is when the actual story and the decisions that the characters make which is definitely written on the page if that can feel very spontaneous and very improvis improvisational that is very impressive and I think that is why this movie works so well because of that very smart script and you can tell the writers and the directors of this film are very passionate about Dungeons and Dragons and it really does feel like you know you had these filmmakers get around a table and played a game of Dungeons and Dragons the players are trying to figure out how in the world to get out of any given situation that's created by the DM in their world that they've created and it feels very natural throughout the entire thing and yes the pacing does feel very repetitive especially when it gets to Zank's character and that whole thing underground the the entire sequences and the set pieces within it all with the dragon is all very fun but at this point I was getting a little tired of the the repetitiveness of this structure but of course right after that you're going to get to the big third act heist so it's it's a little complaint to mine. And when it comes to the humor of this movie, I think it almost always lands, and the directors of this film previously did Game Night, which I think is one of the most underrated comedies in recent years, and I think you can put this right up against that movie of being just a really funny movie. There's so many scenes in this film that are so funny to me. The whole Jonathan thing was one of my favorite running jokes in the entire movie. The zombie bits was, of course, hilarious, and it comes back as the post credit scene of the movie scene that they didn't ask one of these zombies all five questions, so it's just kind of sitting there still. And even the physical comedy really worked for me in this movie as well like the carriage scene where they're trying to get the the painting with the portal on it inside of that place for one it was very creative use of these magical powers and this portal and seeing just smith hang out the bottom of it and the knights kind of talking to each other so they don't see what is going on in the background and seeing holga up 
holding the legs of this character up on the hill and they notice that instead. It's just, all the, the humor in this movie really does work and probably the biggest laugh out of me in this movie was when Chris Pine is playing that instrument to trying to distract the guards. It is incredibly funny. I was dying laughing pretty much consistently throughout this entire movie. And if I were to get into some of my main criticisms of this movie, it's of course going to be the villains of this film because, you know, Hugh Grant has a lot of fun in this movie. I think he was a little a little too campy at the beginning of this movie and he, he was a bit over the top, but he kind of grew on me and he plays a great foil against these characters because, of course, you know, he betrayed the characters in this movie, so there's some personal stakes that they want him to go down. Of course, he has Kira throughout this entire movie. He's been kind of molding her into his own image and he has this sort of god complex to him and, of course, he gets some great come up. It's when all the, the gold and all the treasures are given to the people of this town by the end of the film. I think that was a very good way to take out this character and instead of beating him up with your fist, you have to kind of outsmart him in this movie because he even has some good scenes in this movie where he's kind of outsmarting the heroes when they're all captured and thrown inside of the maze, inside of the game in this movie. And so there's a lot of great stuff with this character, but the real big villain where you're going to fight them at the end of the film is going to be the Red Wizard or the Red Witch in this movie. I don't really remember. I think her name was Sophina. She was kind of in the background for the first half of this movie because she's kind of the, she's holding the puppet strings when it comes to Hugh Grant's character. And so she's in the background plotting all these different things. And by the end of the movie, when she enacts her plan, where she's trying to turn this entire Coliseum into an army of the undead, but they all run away because all the, the gold is sprinkling throughout the streets. She really is just like a, a bad guy that they're going to have to fight. Although that action sequence at the end of the movie where they're all using their different abilities and, you know, when it comes to magic in movies and how it's used, I think the Fantastic Beast movies and the Harry Potter movies in general really dropped the ball in it, which is probably why this fantasy world really did have a lot of draw to me because you can see them using spells. You can see them using different abilities. I guarantee is probably in the game. I know my friends said that there's so many Easter eggs in this film to the actual game that is so fun to see from all the, 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 the hardcore Dungeons & Dragons fans, but from an outside perspective, from somebody who's a more casual viewer that's going to be watching this film, it's just so entertaining to see magic used in a fun way that's not just lasers being zapped at each other. And so this entire final act of this movie is still extremely entertaining to watch despite the villain being a little bit unwritten because you get to see so many great sequences throughout this entire thing. The actual heist that they try to pull off is very good and the plan always changing and going from plan A to plan B to plan C which is just plan A and plan D which is just plan B but you know the stink is on plan A and B so they had to switch it over to C and D and it's, it's just very well written very funny the whole uh, maze sequence was also very thrilling all the obstacles that was thrown at them and the way that they had to problem solve the way out of any situation was very entertaining and the final battle against Sofina was very gratifying and I think the only thing I would change about this final battle is Holga is fatally wounded by the ending of this movie and like I said she's the heart of the end of this film and the only thing I would change about this ending is I wish that her sacrifice was actually seen on screen rather than seeing Sofina taken out in a very funny and outlandish way by the way but then immediately after that you cut to seeing Holga lying on the ground bleeding I wish you actually got to see this sacrifice this very dramatic moment where she does jump in front of a blade or something like that to kind of build up this moment even more but as soon as they cut back to Holga dying on the ground I pretty much assumed that Edgin was going to use the tablet of reawakening to revive her rather than his own wife and I, I like that they built that up as well you got to see the dragon fly throughout the entire movie kind of building his entire character character arc to be less selfish to be less you know worrying about his own emotions worrying about his daughter's emotions instead and a kind of a message from beyond to say that it's okay to move on and that to rip her away from this new life that she's possibly formed in the afterlife would be very selfish of him to do and so to save Holga which was essentially the surrogate mother of Kira throughout this entire movie essentially this entire life that she's had is a very very great way to end Chris Pine's character arc throughout this entire movie and again this cast was so charming to see this entire moment to see this family lose one of their own to only be revived and have a nice little reunion at this moment I couldn't help but to feel swept up in this moment. But that is where the movie ends, and as somebody who's not a big D&D fan, I think this is a great way to introduce people into this world, and for those who are diehard fans of D&D, I think this is going to be very satisfying to everybody. Everybody who went to my screening of it, all my friends really did love this movie, and they are diehard D&D fans. They were talking about all the different Easter eggs in this film because there are countless amounts of Easter eggs, so I'm sure you can find a bunch of videos out on the internet pointing out all the different references that you can see throughout this entire movie, and 
And like I said, I think it worked for all audiences. I'm very glad they took the, the Guardians of the Galaxy type of approach with this movie. I think it really did work. And it just it ended up in a very satisfying way. Even though the villain was probably the weakest part of the movie, I'm excited to see them do a follow-up. So I'm really hoping this movie is successful because I want to see all these actors come back to this world, to the, to the roles that they have created in this film, and just have another fun adventure with them. Because I think it is very much worth returning to Dungeons & Dragons. So now I pass it off to you. Have you guys seen Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves? Comment down below and let me know all your thoughts on this film, the things that you liked, things that you didn't like, and all the little Easter eggs and references that you absolutely loved in this movie. I'm very curious to hear all your thoughts on this one. And if you enjoyed this review, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel to see more reviews just like this one. I actually have an early review out for Mario, which I got to see early. It's going to be releasing, I think, tomorrow as of uploading this video. I think I'm uploading it on Friday. So on Saturday, we'll have a review out for Mario, which I'm very excited to talk about that film. And of course, I have weekly reviews out for The Mandalorian, which I have a lot of fun talking about that show as well. So like I said, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, comment down below, and I hope to see you all in my next one.